You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? I'm good, man. We are, we're busy people. We're very, very busy people. Yeah, please don't say important. Just say busy. No, I said busy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, big... you don't have to even be smart to be busy. Um, we want to thank everybody for making this the first listen uh, of every podcast for you in the morning. I hope you're listening to this on Friday morning for uh, pre-Alabama celebration stuff. Also want to thank NetSuite for being the title sponsor. I'll talk about NetSuite in just a bit. Jimmy, before we get into Alabama Cincinnati predictions and general feel of the place, because you're there for the game, yep. um, let's do talk about the Alabama Tennessee basketball game just for a minute. Um, because we didn't do a pod yesterday. There's just too much going on. You were traveling to Dallas. I'm in New Orleans with the family. Everything's nutty bo duddy. So um what did you think of the Alabama Tennessee game? Um, and do you feel any better about the direction of the team right now? Absolutely. And this is why. I mean, I, I came out of this maybe the opposite of people that were like, gosh, we play terrible and Tennessee's missing a couple guys and we didn't shoot it and we didn't get points from Shaq and the normal places. You know, JD Davison's got these turnover issues. All those things are true, but this is the way I look at it. We beat a very, very good team. Yeah, they were down two guys, but that's not the only two guys they got. We beat a very good team, and we didn't play well. We, we're we're so much better than we looked last night, and we will be better than this. At some point this season, we're going to snap out of this little shooting slump we're in, and when we are, we're going to be so good. It reminded me, Luke, literally reminded me last year when when the bitching got. There was bitching last season. There, there was some, some bitching on social media, uh, talk radio, uh, you know, basketball fans talking amongst each other. There was some bitching over things not going well. And what did we, what did we go, 16-2 and two in the SEC? And it was because when things weren't going well, there were things that were fixable. There were things that were like, well, this is just a little, little you know, we're, we're, we're better than this. We're, we are better – then we looked last night, and last night we still beat, going into last night, the number one team in the SEC in net. The, in, in those, those net rankings, Tennessee was number one. Still beat them despite the fact we didn't play well. So I think this team's going to eventually start shooting well because we're made up of a team of, of largely good shooters. And when we start shooting it well – we're gonna be really good, and I think it's coming, man. So I, I, I left the game, uh, watching the game, feeling pretty excited about what's coming up. Yeah, you are the eternal optimist, and I appreciate that. And I, I look, I agree with a lot of that you said. Um, that when we start knocking our shots down, we're gonna be hill. I mean, yesterday, and we're recording this on Thursday night, so it was yesterday. Um, I mean, man, Jason Holt was like hitting the side of the backboard. Um, Jaden Shackelford was airballing. It was nuts. I was like, what the hell is happening? And part of me does think that some of the league has sort of caught up to our offense in terms of we drive and then dish back out for a three usually. And at first it seemed so unconventional, but then it was working last year. And now people are cutting off those lanes. What we need is something like, J.D. Davison to start finishing at the rim more instead of looking to dish. And that's where a lot of his turnovers are coming in. But overall, look, as I said on the radio show that I subbed in for you today, that I will sacrifice an ugly win that gives most uh, helmet heads a sense of impending doom to allow Noah mm-hmm. Gurley to maybe have his coming out party, which is what he did, and, right. and be like, okay, we this is overall going to be a good thing, but the win was ugly. Yet and yes, I fully acknowledge Tennessee was missing its two arguably best players. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt it affected the game. I have no doubt uh, that if they had played, Tennessee probably wins. 
But in the end, they didn't. We did. Let's take the win and move on. Because as one of the announcers said very poignantly, um, when the play-by-play guy said, hey, this is a big game, isn't it? The color guy said, well, it's a big game for Alabama. You know, you don't need to lose to a Tennessee team missing his two best players at home first game of the year. That doesn't need to happen. And he's absolutely right. So I'm going to have the same optimistic outlook you have. And I'm going to say, okay, Alabama's going to take this week off now, which is essentially what they have, and come back refocused and re-energized to play against Florida on the road next Wednesday. And then we play at Missouri. Now, Missouri's not very good, but, um, you know, on the road in the SEC is always a thing. And then we got a home game against Auburn, who looks awesome. So, yeah, it's we got a three-game stretch that ain't going to be easy. And uh, we whole, league's, to- whole league's tough. It, it, there, there won't be an easy stretch all season long. This will be 18 games of hell. Let me say this too. I, you said this league is tough, and I've been preaching that this that the SEC is going to be really good. But, but up until this week, I'm not so sure anymore. Are we sure LSU is good? Are we sure Arkansas is good? Are we sure yes. we're good? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I, I'm not. <laughs> I say I yes. Watched, Hey, let me tell you something. I watched Auburn go up 18-1 to on LSU, and it wasn't because Mm -hmm. Auburn's defense was just clamped down because LSU couldn't do anything. It was more because LSU was just looking bad. Um, Now, Auburn's Mm -hmm. a really good team. I mean, them and Kentucky are the best Final Four-looking teams in the the league right now. I know Kentucky's good. I know Auburn's good, okay? But Arkansas just got hammered by Mississippi State on the road. Now, again, it's a road trip, it's a road trip, whatever. But I'm just telling you, I'm I'm sort of leaning less like the, the SEC is going to be awesome this year and more towards, okay, maybe I oversold it some. But, Jimmy, let me go ahead and tell everybody about next week because we got to talk about a playoff game here in just a minute. So I do want to tell you about next week. As soon as this comes up, by God, I'm going to do it. This is it, the putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software? To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. Over 28,000 businesses already use NetSuite. For the new year, NetSuite has a new financing program for those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked. Head to netsuite.com slash locked for this special one-of-a-kind financing offer on the number one financial system for growing businesses, netsuite.com slash locked. I also want to tell you about betonline.ag. Betonline.ag is where you want to go to get that bet in. Go check them out. Look, you got time today as a welcome bonus. You'll get a 50% welcome bonus if you use promo code locked on. You can deposit 100 bucks. You get to play with 150, then bet on the tide. That's, hey, that's the Luke Robinson certified lock of the year for the week go to betonline.ag check them out you can play any of the college football bowl games any of the nfl games college basketball games you can play parlays and teasers you can play poker and blackjack bet on reality tv whatever you want betonline.ag is where you want to go to do all them things betonline.ag jimmy your boots on the ground in fort worth so tell me what's up uh, well, based on the, you know, based on what I can report from what I've seen with my own eyes so far is, uh, there's a lot of Cincinnati fans around. We went to the, uh, the famous stockyard in, uh, Fort Worth and uh, there did appear to be more Cincinnati fans, but they were, they were friendly. They were, uh, not cocky, not, uh, not, uh, uh, you know, we, we have sometimes strange as it is played other SEC teams in these postseason games. And that's when things get sort of hostile because that's who we see every year. And they're sort of the rivals. Whenever we play somebody brand new, things are pretty friendly. So uh, that's really all I can report from what I've seen with my own eyes. Um, but in terms of what I think is going to happen in the game. Uh, no, I'm no, no, hang on, hang on, okay. hang on. Save, right. that, save that for the next segment because I, okay. want, I want to get a feel for the buzz. What's the atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, is, there is some. Is, is there an energy? There is some. Okay. Yeah, there, 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 I would say there is some. Now, of course, I've only been in uh, in, in the stockyard for, I will say, a, a fairly funny exchange when I saw a person wearing a Texas A&M uh, shirt with his wife who stopped Alabama fans, and not us, who stopped him and said, why, why is everyone in town wearing Alabama stuff? What, what's going on? 
and they were no, confused. You're shooting me, right? No, no, no. They were confused as to uh, what was going on, and they're like uh, SEC championship. I mean, uh, the the playoff, and uh, the A and M guy was going like, "That's in Dallas," and and my, my thought every time I see this is like, if you care enough to wear this shirt. Why don't you have any idea what in the whole world is going on? I mean, that, that, that's boggled my mind forever. But yeah, uh, a person and, and the wife, you know, uh, into A&M enough to wear the colors, so they must be into college football, you would think, having no idea that the semifinal was being played in Dallas and that Alabama was in it. So that was about the only mind-boggling thing. But that's just one guy in a sea of a billion people. You know, Dallas is like the – sixth the most largest populous city in the in the United States. So there, there's a lot of stuff always going on here. But yeah, I, I would say that there is buzz. Uh the hotel that we're in, even though it's in Fort Worth, thirty minutes from the stadium, is full of both Alabama and Cincinnati fans. And uh there there's general partying and excitement going on. There's just not much hostility. Uh I I would say things are uh, are pretty friendly. Jimmy, let me tell everybody about Built Bar. Go to Built.com. Check them out. You will love some delicious, nutritious, scrump delicious Built Bars. They're covered in chocolate usually, unless they're covered in something even just as good, like when you get the key lime one and it's covered in some kind of key limey thing that's just fantastic. Go to Built.com and check out all these mothers because I'm telling you, they got a cornucopia of flavors. You will buy into all of them, and you'll probably buy all of them. It's the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan, bruh. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. Not even a maybe. It does taste better than a candy bar. Look, most Built Bars contain this. I'm reading this verbatim. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugars, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Holy Finoli. That's crazy. Even if you're not a huge fan of working out, you can at least eat something that tastes good. You know, go, go to built.com, use promo code locked 15, get 15% off your order at built.com. That's built.com promo code locked L O C K E D 15 locked. And then the number 15, don't spell out the 15. That'd be nutty. Go to built.com and use that. And you will thank me later via the Twitter verse. All right, Jimmy, it's prediction time, so lay it on me, bro. I, I, you know, there's – I'm not going to say I'm making three predictions because, my goodness, but I can make a case that Alabama's going to win this game 42-7. Uh, and I'm hoping that happens, and I think there's a good chance it could happen. And I think if Alabama plays its absolute best game – possible, much like they did against Georgia, much like they did against Mississippi State, a little bit like they did against Miami in the opener. If Alabama plays its A game as well as it possibly can, I I think it's a 42-7 type game. I also think uh, I have seen an Alabama team this year that is mistake prone on the back end on defense, that uh, on offense can have a difficult time getting uh, blitzes blocked and, uh, and, and Bryce being under a great deal of pressure. If Cincinnati mimics the LSU and Auburn effort, uh, I can see this being a one-score game and being very tight to the end. But that's not what I'm predicting. What I'm predicting is somewhat in the middle, which is an Alabama team that plays well, that eliminates the big bus, but that isn't the best Alabama performance of the year, Uh, a little more run dependent, a little less dependent on the explosive pass play, and a defense – that doesn't shut out Cincinnati, but sort of sends a message to Cincinnati that they won't be able to score enough points to win the game. So uh, in the end, an uneven performance, but good enough to beat a really good Cincinnati team, uh, Alabama 34, Cincinnati 17. Okay, so you got Alabama covering then, with assuming the line stays at 13 and a half. I can buy that. Um, here's my thing. Uh, And I said this on the Locked On Today podcast, which I cut a little bit earlier tonight um, with my good friend, uh, forgot his name, but it doesn't matter. Um, (laughs) He's a a very good friend, though. He is. I mean, but my memory is terrible. Um, Anywho, (laughs) so what I said was, you know, because he mentioned that here comes Alabama again, the Death Star, you know, the most 
villainous team and most feared team, most loathed team in college football right now. And here they come and just to whip some ass again. Right. And I said, you know, maybe it's me wishful thinking. Um, and, and I don't even know if it's, you'd call it wishful thinking. Cause I, I think we all revel in the villain role, the, the, the Darth Vader oh, role we have, but I'm wondering if most of the country isn't going to be like, please y'all just beat Cincinnati because see if Cincinnati wins and you're any other power five power five team that hadn't been in the playoffs, all of a sudden, you know, every, every fan is going to be like, why the hell hadn't we done that? You know? So I'm wondering if fans of other teams like a Purdue, like a Tennessee, like a, an Oregon state or a UCLA or a Syracuse, I wonder if they're going to be like, Hey, we don't want Cincinnati to win because then that makes us look even shittier for not being there when Cincinnati's made it and beaten Alabama. You see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, you're going to give a Cincinnati win gives a lot of hope to a lot of people. So, no, 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 no. It Yes, in a way it does give some hope. In another way, it makes them disgusted with their own leadership. So I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking that they're like, I would rather Alabama just bludgeon this team because here's the other thing. If Cincinnati were to win, no matter who wins between Georgia and Michigan, uh, the whole world's going to believe, okay, that team's going to blow Cincinnati out. And the only reason Cincinnati beat Alabama was because of some, you know, voodoo curse or whatever. So I think more people are going to be rooting for Alabama, for like an Alabama-Michigan lineup. I think that's what the what most people would prefer that aren't uh, that don't have any vested interest in this game. I think most of the country are like a – a bland uh, college football, random college football fan would probably be like, okay, um, yeah, I'd rather like just see Alabama, Michigan, because I don't want Alabama, Georgia, already seen it and seen it in a national championship setting. I don't want Cincinnati, Michigan, or Cincinnati, Georgia, because it, it feels like they'd get blown out. So Alabama, Michigan, Saban against Harbaugh, that's interesting. And um, yeah. Maybe we'd finally get to see Najee Harris play against Alabama, you know, okay. since he did sign with Michigan. Um, but anyway, my prediction is this. I'm going Alabama 38-27. I know that seems like a lot of points for Cincinnati to some Alabama fans on here. I get that. But I think this is one of those situations where Alabama is in control most of the game, has like the lead either by two scores or the lead and the ball all the time. And – I think Cincinnati's going to get some points because I think they have a good, experienced quarterback. Look, the, Ritter has over like 12,500 total yards of offense in his career, over 10,000 yards passing and like 2,200 yards rushing. I mean, he's got close to 12,500 total yards of offense in his career. That's a big deal. So I, I feel like Cincinnati's going to get some points. But you also got a uh, running back that's a home run hitter. Boy, I said this on the radio show I did for you today my kingdom for Jerome Ford back on this team. Because how great would it be to have Jerome Ford as our third down back right now? A guy that's, a, a you know, shifty, um, not necessarily a scat back, but quick as hell. And uh, your boy Randy asked me today, said, who does Jerome Ford remind you of? And I want before you tell me your answer, because I'm afraid you'll ruin my answer, my answer was Terry Grant. What do you think about that? Oh, I like it. No, I do like it. I like it. Uh, and and I, I think that answer is better than uh, what I was going to say uh, when you said, hey, guess who I said? Uh, Jameer Gibbs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh <gosh. that's, laughs> well, well, I mean. I, He's not as good probably, as Jameer It's probably, well, it's, it, it's, it's over-exaggerating how good Jerome Ford is, but that's the type of back he is. I mean, okay. they're similar. They're similar backs. I agree that Gibbs is more likely to have like a, a good NFL career, but uh, but they're they're similar. They're alike. Okay, that's fair. And it's also fair to say that Jerome Ford is better than Terry Grant. So um, yeah, I, I don't think, even though, but, but I like the answer. I, I I think we're I think we're both right. It's funny because we talked about it on the radio show today. I said, you know, people forget. I said when you when I think Terry Grant. Um, people just don't remember him, but you do know he scored like a 55 yard touchdown on the very first play of the Nick Saban era as an Alabama coach. And people forget yeah. that. We predicted, I, I, I actually predicted that. That was a long time ago, a little bit before 
uh, locked on Bama or talking to Tuscaloosa. So I remember predicting it. Terry Grant's going to score a touchdown in the first carry. And that, that did. Terry Grant was a good player for what he was. But for what Alabama eventually became, he wasn't quite good enough for no, that. That's true. But, uh, but, but, but uh, he, 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 he had some skills. Dude was All fast. Right, buddy. Well, look, you pull them through tomorrow. I hope everybody's listening to this on game day, getting ready and getting perked up. Hey, Thank if you. we win big, if I'll, 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 let's say this for the Locked On Bama listeners. If, we, if Alabama wins big on the next Locked On Bama show, you will hear maybe your favorite uh, rant from me ever. I'm okay. at the building right now. If Alabama wins big, and if we don't, no one will ever hear it because it doesn't deserve to be heard. But if Alabama wins big, we have a very special rant coming on the next show. I thought you were going to say if Alabama wins big, you were going to do the next podcast naked or something. And I'm like, I'm doing it naked right recording. now. I am, recording this, I am recording this at a party in a bathroom. <laughs> so, so we're lucky I'm not naked now. We're all lucky. All right, buddy. So uh, pull them through tomorrow and roll tide. Roll tide.